Okay. Welcome everyone to this third event in the series celebrating international collaboration at the Educational Research Department here at Lancaster University. My name is Janja Komlinovic and I'm the director of the Center for Higher Education Research and Evaluation, which is hosting this webinar today. So um, in this series, we aim to connect and reconnect with our visiting researchers. And we would like to showcase their work as well as their experience of visiting us. And it is my absolute honor to welcome Visna Holobek to this webinar today. Uh, she is a doctoral researcher at the Faculty of Education and Culture at Tampere University in Finland. And her research interests include internationalization of higher education, organizational cultures, teaching and learning, pedagogical development, digitalization, and online education. Visna's PhD research focuses on discursively constructed teaching and learning cultures in the context of pedagogical development programs in Palestinian, Brazilian, and Thai universities. So Visna was a visiting researcher here at the Educational Research Department between February and June this year, so quite fresh with the experience. Um, and the plan for today is that uh, Visna will first present her research for roughly 20 minutes. And we will then invite Professor Don Passi, our Departmental Director of Internationalization, to say a few words about this year's um, Celebrating International Collaboration Activity and webinar series. Visna will then spend five to ten minutes to say a few words about her experience visiting us, and we will then open the floor for questions and answers and discussions with you all, the audience. But please feel free to use the chat for discussions throughout the webinar. You can chat, discuss, debate, and ask questions throughout the webinar. If you ask questions directed at Visna, I will do my best to collate and read um, at the Q&A part of the session. Um, so please keep your microphones muted. Uh, you will be able to ask questions verbally in the Q&A period, and I will invite you to unmute yourself then. You can also turn off your camera when presentation is ongoing and the presenter is sharing the screen. Otherwise, please feel free to keep them switched on so that we can see each other. I should also say that this event is video recorded and we will uh, we will share it on our departmental channels and perhaps wider uh, on social media accounts such as YouTube. So without further ado, I now give the floor to uh, Visna. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Yanya, for this kind introduction and uh, thank you, Chiri and, and address uh, department for inviting me uh, and well first of all thank you for hosting me uh, earlier this year uh, as so as Yanya mentioned I was a visiting researcher earlier this year so um, yes it's it's really great to kind of be back at least in this kind of online space and to reconnect uh, with many of you that I met uh, at the department in person as well so I will share my screen now and to a little bit talk about my, my research. Let me just put it in the slideshow mode. Yes. Okay, so um, Yanya already introduced uh, me and uh, she mentioned that I'm a doctoral researcher in Tampere University in Finland. And uh, my PhD research is what I will be talking about today. Um, I'm researching a bit of a complex issue, so I will try to open up a little bit these kinds of topics behind what I'm doing. So um, teaching and learning cultures in transnational higher education is kind of the broad, uh, the broad uh, title within which I, I move in my research. And then specific focus is on transnational pedagogical development programs organized by a Finnish university. Um, Briefly, what I will talk about is context of Finland, about my research project and theory methods behind it. Uh, case one, which is the Finnish-Palestinian University collaboration, and then some concluding remarks. And later on, I will uh, come back to my reflections related to my research visit in, in Lancaster University. 
So a brief uh, thought experiment, if I may. I just invite you to, to briefly share, if you have one word, what comes to your mind when you think of Finnish education system? So if you can share that maybe in chat in like a word or two, uh, would be really great. Um, I already have, yes, excellency, quality are some words that come up. If anyone knew equality, thank you. So these are the topics, but then basically excellency, quality, are these issues and inequality, some features that are quite often uh, spoken about when we talk about Finnish education system, Finnish education, and in a way also Finnish higher education, we would hope. So um, what, what it is that... Um, High levels of training and status respect for teachers. Yes, among others, these are the topics we, we will talk about. But when we talk about the Finnish context and Finnish policymakers, um, in 2010 uh, or so, let's say for the past 20 years, Finnish policymakers have decided to try to do something with this reputation that you just addressed. So this international reputation of Finland uh, having high quality education system, um, excellence is the word quite often used. And uh, because of this, Finnish education institutions have been increasing their international collaboration uh, in the area of education for the past 20 years. And in 2010, there is this document uh, here, uh, the picture here is a very important paper that um, developed the internationalization for higher education in Finland um, in the direction of education export, as they call it. Um, they also organized this Team Finland Knowledge Network as a way of, of trying to promote Finnish excellence and share uh, Finnish uh, educational expertise um, as a way of exporting it. This is the, the background of how Finnish education system, uh, Finnish uh, government sees how higher education institutions can internationalize themselves. And this is basically the space within which there has been recent studies trying to understand what is happening with this internationalization and what is going on here. And, and furthermore, can Finnish educational ideas be transferred to another context? What happens when different pedagogical cultures meet in transnational cooperation? And do these encounters change uh, institutional teaching and learning cultures? And if yes, how? The last question is basically how my research project started. So that's what I wanted to learn, what, what it is when we could talk about teaching and learning cultures in these transnational higher education spaces. So the project focuses on teaching and learning cultures, um, and uh, the context is uh, pedagogical development programs in higher education institutions. And I say these just to notice the abbreviations I will be using later on in the presentation. In practice, what it means that a Finnish university organized pedagogical development programs in universities in three countries, Palestine, Brazil, and Thailand, and these were six months programs uh, that were aimed at enhancing the participants' pedagogical competence as individuals and as a community by engaging them in reflection and renegotiation of pedagogical conceptions and approaches in academic teaching. So these programs were basically organized as a part of professional development of these university teachers in Palestine, Brazil, and Thailand. And um, these were organized between 2016 and 2019, and um, there have been multiple cohorts uh, of, uh, of these programs, uh, but basically eight Finnish uh, university teachers acted as educators in these programs, and about 389 university teachers with different disciplinary backgrounds from these three countries participated as students in these um, in these educational programs. So visually presented is how I set up my, my uh, research design in this figure. Basically, Finnish higher education went and organized these three programs. They were quite similar programs between themselves when it comes to the curriculum from the Finnish side, six months long, and the topics were very similar, uh, basically broad topics related to scholarship of teaching and learning. 
and then exported these programs to Palestine, Brazil, and Thailand. And uh, as transnational educational programs about education, these programs created a space of dynamic cross-cultural pedagogical encounters, and that uh, kind of enables me as a researcher of these programs to kind of see a little bit about these differences and similarities in higher education teaching and learning cultures. So what is the research problem here? is that transnational education uh, in general and specifically transnational education programs are seen as beneficial for, for higher education institutions because they widen the opportunities for intercultural exchange and modernization of local higher education systems. Or in other words, they are providing opportunities, learning opportunities in cross-cultural spaces. On the other hand, transnational education has been criticized as being a profit-seeking endeavor driven primarily by economic rationale and portraying higher education as a tradable com commodity. Basically, in this way, uh, this exporter-importer relationship introduces this unequal power distribution between the producers and consumer consumers of the education. And it has been criticized uh, as transnational education as cultural and ideological imperialism. So what is going on here? And is there a benefit? Is there a criticism? How can we understand what happens, in fact, between these transnational collaborators is what I'm trying to understand. And I'm trying to use three broad strands of research. And uh, I try to visually present them as these three kind of uh, colorful things, blobs of research, they are quite intertwined uh, in between themselves, at least as I use them in my in my approach. So I rely on research done in, in relation to obviously transnational education, uh, institutional cultures in higher education, and then post-structural discourse analysis. And I will say a couple of words about each of these now. So when we talk about transnational education, uh, it's quite often used interchangeably with the terms cross-border education or internationalization abroad, which basically means movement of people, programs, policies, various educational activities across borders. In my case, I look at the program going across border from Finland into these three countries. And the previous studies questioned transferability, transferability of pedagogical ideas and they call for greater cultural contextualization to make learning relevant for the learners. So basically, it has been shown that these cultural aspects, while the programs travel from one country to another, are an important aspect to, to consider, because as, as it's being mentioned here, uh, transnational education involves explicit and implicit negotiation between teachers, learners, contents, and contexts. Um, and as I mentioned, they have been criticized, uh, transnational education programs have been criticized because they, in a way, promote this kind of imposition discourse, imposition of perspectives from foreign to local. Um, and uh, Jerashimovic here specifically introduces this interesting idea of hybridization of foreign and local perspectives as, as a potential approach that can promote more reciprocity in, in this collab transnational collaboration. And this is somewhere where I'm trying to somehow dive deeper into in this, in this uh, relationship. So institutional cultures in higher education is one of the uh, maybe most frequently explored perspectives in higher education research, but it has been uh, kind of pointed out that uh, often the perspective taken in understanding higher education culture is in uh, using this so-called inter integrationist perspective in which the organization is a homogeneous entity with a stable culture, something that is also often called the glue, the institutional or organizational glue that holds the organization together. And this has been criticized as being a sim too simplistic approach to present especially these dynamic attributes of, of cultures. And as you will notice, I in fact use multiple cultures because I rely on this fragmentation perspective that talks about this amb ambiguity and pr pluralism uh, of, of cultures within the institution and around it. There is no really a border between what institution is, what the surrounding cultures are. There is a... Um, 
uh, great in interchange of, of forces going on back and forth between institution and the context, which also can bring different contradictions, meaning that cultures are built through uh, agreement, but also disagreements. And that also relates to this anthropological approach, which refers to meaning making processes of cultures or the cultures being built through meaning making processes or a multiple, multiple cultural configuration approach uh, that Paul Traveler has been developing, which speaks of this dynamism and multiplicity and multi levelness of cultural aspects within the institution and also indeed beyond it or around it. And I see it as a more nuanced approach to understanding cultures in higher education. I speak of teaching and learning uh, cultures as one analytical aspect of institutional cultures. So in that sense, I see teaching and learning as uh, different aspects of the same processes in a way unified understanding of all educational processes that is happening that are happening in the institution including learning uh, teaching and learning practices assessment supervision curriculum etc and uh, in that way i define teaching and learning cultures as discursive meaning making processes that guide the ways in which educational processes are understood and also organized at an institution and the last strand that kind of is providing me with onto epistemological and methodological approach is post-structuralist perspective that sees the organizations to be of discursive nature. Discourses uh, systematically form the objects of which they speak, as Foucault reminds us, and they not only rep discourses not only represent the social reality, but construct it through power by constraining or enab enabling possible ways of understanding and acting in specific contexts. And I use uh, post-structuralist discourse analysis, also called Foucauldian discourse analysis, uh, which investigates what realities ways of thinking being doing are made possible within discourses. Basically, I try to find what are the variety of discursive constructions and subject position in relation to teaching and learning in higher education. And I'm trying to specifically understand teaching and learning cultures and the discourses within the institution, around the institution, and in these kinds of transnational education encounters. So to uh, refer to the case one, so the Finnish uh, Palestinian University collaboration. Um, as I mentioned, I have three cases. So the Brazil and the, the Brazilian collaboration and Thai collaboration are, are currently studies that are currently ongoing. But the Finnish Palestinian collaboration, I've, I've conducted this study already and published it. So uh, you're very welcome to check it out later if you're interested to read a little bit uh, in depth about the study itself. But the research questions here are basically what discourses of teaching and learning are identified among the Palestinian university teachers or instructors, and how do discourses among university instructors construct teaching and learning cultures in this university in the context of transnational pedagogical development process. The data sets uh, that I used are two, so I've conducted discourse analysis and two textual data sets four focus group interviews with 18 Palestinian university teachers conducted before these transnational programs took place. And then uh, Moodle data, as I call them. So we use, use Moodle as a learning management platform. And then the data set was collected uh, through these, uh, from the Moodle, uh, basically data sets, uh, data set includes discussion forums, written assignments, self-reflection texts written by these uh, participants, the university teachers, while being in, in this six months long uh, pedagogical development program. So what are the findings? So the findings are um, basically, I found five uh, discourses of teaching and learning uh, that the Palestinian teachers draw upon when they speak about teaching and learning. So discourse of disciplinary differences, discourse of traditional and modern education, discourse of improving education, discourse of the social, cultural and religious context, and discourse of the political and economic circumstances. I will say a couple of words about each of these. But I would just try to kind of, I, would, I do <laughs> uh, want to uh, emphasize that discourses are not descriptions of practice. 
they are not individual conceptions. Uh, they are constructive filters that enable or disable certain ways of doing, speaking and being. And therefore, of course, affect practice, but they are not primarily practice descriptions. So this is just something that I would like to remind while I speak about the, what these uh, five discourses are. And they are highly interconnected, so they're more analytically divided, but in fact, they are very much inter intertwined within the data sets. So this course of disciplinary differences speaks of teaching and learning depending on the subject, as, as the participants say. So in hard sciences, uh, they speak about um, uh, teaching and learning hard, in hard sciences in terms of traditional teaching method of lecturing, giving the information with no room for discussion. On the other hand, when we talk about teaching and learning in soft disciplines, they invoke the ideas of student-centeredness, discussions, diversified knowledge sources. Um, very closely related to this discourse is the discourse of traditional and modern education, teaching and learning seen as uh, being about two different options. Traditional on one hand, teacher-led lecturing, type of teaching and learning. And then we have student-oriented activating teaching and learning methods discussions. In that sense, traditional and modern. And uh, both of these discourses speak about uh, subject positions of teachers and students. Uh, on one hand, students are constructed as excellent, highly engaged versus uninterested or, or disengaged students. So it's they speak of these two extremes. Um, modern education also refers to using uh, modern technologies and digital learning environments, which was also an interesting aspect uh, in, the, in the data. And then, as you can imagine, this course of improving education is somehow, again, very much related to these uh, two other discourses. So there is a need to change and improve teaching and learning processes towards modern methods, and that will lead to overall improvement of education and increase graduate employability. Uh, they speak of active role and responsibility of university teachers to work together and with the university to modernize practices and environments. So this has been, um, in a way, these three discourses are very kind of maybe more related to internal institutional um, discourses. And then we have two more uh, discourses that are a little bit broader, so happening in the institution and around it, and especially coming out in the in these kinds of uh, transnational education. So this course of social, cultural, and uh, religious context is uh, so teaching and learning in higher education has has been constructed as important engine for societal development uh, by producing qualified workforce that will serve the societal needs. And it's seen that teaching and learning has an important role in disseminating religious values that are beneficial for the society. And interestingly here, they speak of Islamic perspective that should be present in all university courses through Islamization of curriculum. This course of the political and economic circumstances is something that we can all imagine uh, is very present in Palestine. Uh, these difficult political and economic circumstances, especially related to prolonged Palestinian-Israeli conflict, has been portrayed as daily situation in Gaza that has significant impact of te on teaching and learning, but is out of our hands. So in that sense, uh, we, have, we see here numerous negative factors that limit the power of academic staff, students, and universities to improve education processes, even though the previous uh, discourse of improving education speaks about urgency to improve, but here, in this context, we, we see that there is this lack of agency, lack of space and, and uh, possibility, power to indeed uh, improve um, education, allowing only minor or local actions of improvement. Some of the concluding remarks, exploring uh, discursively constructed teaching and learning cultures, uh, in, in my opinion, in, in this research, I guess, shows that indeed provides rich descriptions of institutional teaching and learning cultures. And we can especially see these, these cont uh, contested discourses, both agreement and disagreements about the same things, that um, really show how context within, but also around the institution and within these transnational uh, uh, education encounters, um, 
this dynamism, we can really capture it by using this course approach. Interestingly, use of English language has been shown as prompting uh, differing discourses. This was only noticed in the interview data because uh, we conducted two interviews in English and two in Arabic, two focus group interviews. And you can notice that in the data set, the topics discussed in English assume that the interviewer doesn't know much about Palestine, so they have to explain these contexts and spaces and, you know, in Palestine, this and that. While when, we, when the interviews were conducted in Arabic, they assume that the person is someone from the inside, they know the context very well, so they don't need to elaborate their, um, the, the general, the, the daily situation in Gaza, as they call it, but they rather focused more on their daily practices and teaching and learning and etc. So this was an interesting observation, and this is something that would definitely be more uh, research. So what kind of inter um, interaction has been prompted by transnational um, uh, encounters in which language? Um, what has been interesting is that the, these uh, transnational pedagogical development programs prompted changes in, in teaching and learning cultures by introducing alternative discourses to the institutional meaning making processes. And these alternative discourses were basically introduced by the, the literature used in the training program, by the educators themselves, uh, by the cultures in and around the Finnish institution in a way. So being in this space where you know that your educators come from Finland and bring their Finnish expertise um, already changes a little bit the way you think about your teaching and learning um, in, in your own institution. And uh, uh, for example, there is this process of hybridization of different perspectives that can be really noticed in these discourses of traditional and modern education and the, the discourse of improving education. So perspectives such as traditional Islamic educational epistemologies, modern societal needs and contemporary academic teaching approaches are intertwined together in what it is that we need to do in our institution to provide better and good education, whatever that means in that local situation. Um, what I would like to somehow finish with is that introducing alternative discourses, um, these pedagogical development programs must create and foster spaces for discursive negotiation and transformation. And there have been in literature different kinds of uh, initiatives, community-oriented initiatives that can provide such spaces for dialogue and exchange between different cultures. So um, intercultural communities of practice or, or uh, communities of talking of scholarship and teaching and learning and things like that. And uh, when we talk about internationalization and transnationalization, uh, in, it needs to strive to create room for diversity, for exchange, for this kinds of hybridization of perspectives Maybe they're hybridization of discourses or epistemologies, traditions of thought, however we want to call them, and facilitate reciprocity of the transnational interaction towards overcoming this polarized provider-receiver understanding of, of, of cooperation. And I do hope that my research contributes at least in some small, small part towards this, this goal. These are the references, and I thank you for your attention, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Visna. This was super interesting and fascinating research. Um, I noted lots of questions myself, uh, and I'm sure that others have as well. Uh, but before we give the floor to everyone, everyone, please note your questions. Uh, you will get space in 10 minutes. But before we open the floor for questions and answers, we are now going to talk about uh, your experience uh, as a visiting researcher here at Lancaster. Um, so as mentioned at the beginning, this webinar is part of the series celebrating international collaboration uh, at the Educational Research Department. So now I invite Professor Don Passi, who is our Director of International Strategy, to say a few words about our activities with international researchers and this series. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Jan Yar, and um, thanks very much, Vesna, for that uh, fascinating talk. And yes, it certainly has 
generated some questions from me, which I haven't yet put into the chat, but let's see how things go. Um, so hello everyone, and thanks for the introduction, Yanya. And just to say that yes, this is a part of a, of a series that we're doing on uh, celebrating international collaboration. Uh, we look at our international collaboration each year uh, within the department. And during this year, we've focused on the theme of visiting researchers. And as Jana said earlier, this is the third in the series of those. We had initially um, a, a departmental view of what was happening in terms of visiting researchers. And then we had the uh, Education and Social Justice uh, Centre who um, set up an event in, in August. This is the third one. And we will have the Tell Centre, who will also be focusing on this theme uh, in an event, another webinar uh, in December. So that's another event to look forward to and to put into your diaries in due course. Um, this, this theme on visiting researchers, I think, is a, is a really important one. And uh, a great deal has come to light as a result, I think, of, of, of what we've viewed over these um, series of events. And it might be that um, the idea of a visiting researcher is conjures up something in one's mind, and it might be a sort of a particular view of how one sees visiting a visiting researcher. But what I think comes across is the diversity that there can be across this whole idea of visiting researchers, whether, for example, a visiting researcher can be someone who can be involved online or whether they have to be. Uh, on site and face to face, um, whether it's to do with teaching or whether it's to do with research or whether it's to do with both, whether it's for um, a long period of time, whether it's for a short period of time, etc. So there are many, many different features and characteristics that we can think about with regard to um, visiting um, researchers. And I think that um, this sort of diversity is also something, Vesna, that you've brought out within your research. You know, thinking about this concept of internationalization sometimes conjures up the fact that it is, it, it's something that sounds simple. Actually, it's complex. You know, there's there's absolutely no doubt about that. And I think that you've you've looked at this um, and started to look at this complexity in a very, very interesting way and that you're teasing out that complexity, I think, in, in a very, very useful way. So um, that's that's what I wanted to say about the whole series. And I know, Vesna, that you have been a visiting researcher with us um, and that you have been um, at Lancaster face to face. And having heard of your perspectives on internationalization, um, through a through a, a teaching and learning lens, it would also be really interesting to hear of your perspectives of of being a visiting researcher with us, and you know what what that means, and 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 what is involved, and and what's come out of that. So we'd be really really interested to hear that. So so please, can I give you the floor again? Thank you so much, Don. And indeed, um, um, in the way researching internationalization and being able to live it through this experience of, of being a visiting researcher is something that I can't, it's very hard to explain the learning experience that I had. I, in, in fact, tried to um, prepare a couple of points in, a, in my slides. Uh, recently, I was asked also back home in my, in my own university to present my experiences. It was so hard to put down in words what are the different learning processes I went through and how it is exactly interesting to be a researcher on internationalization and then be in these kinds of uh, international learning spaces. So I will reshare my slides. Let me just find them. So um, reshare my slides and just to bring a couple of points that I wrote down because I think it's easier to, to um, to somehow guide my thinking, otherwise it will be all around. So um, yes, some reflections. Um, 
indeed i was there for 16 weeks from february to 3rd of june and at this point i would really again like to thank the educational research department and specifically paul ashwin that were very open for accepting me it was very easy i basically drop an email hey could you take me would you be willing to host me yes sure welcome that it was that easy uh, of course there were some practicalities to think about when it comes to covid issues and um Indeed, it, it is a little bit of a tricky a tricky time at the beginning of, of the year where it still was a little bit uncertain what's going on with COVID and is it over or it's not. I don't know if we are still sure at this point either. Um, but yes, so I, I've traveled to Lancaster and I was there at the department uh, uh, for, for 16 weeks. And I came with very broad goals and expectations, something that I've talked also with Paul um, about via emails that I would really like to just experience a different working uh, ex environment and different research in environment. And then to visit the department that has such a strong higher, higher education research focus, I, I really felt this was an important space to, to learn from. And then to meet other researchers who focus on higher education and use maybe similar, but also different research approaches. And in a way, I was hoping for some sort of a research retreat, as you can imagine, leave behind a little bit the some of the administrative tasks that I had at home. Um, what I gained was that and more. So um, it was really rich, as I said, it was really very inspiring to be in this space. So first of all, being a PhD researcher in a different context was really, really interesting. And here again, I would like to thank many of your um, so-called traditional uh, root PhD researchers that I met that opened up so much experiences and learning through their experiences. That was really great. Um, also meeting other researchers in your different programs in the structure was really interesting. So just learning about these different ways of doing a PhD and different positions that PhD researchers have, different uh, spaces they come from, and, and the ways they engage with PhD, this was very interesting, because obviously I know how it is to be a PhD in Finland in a Finnish institution, so that was very, very interesting to learn. Um, I've also found very interesting to experience this kind of different higher education or generally education system and uh, to learn a little bit about some local topical matters, uh, for example, the, the higher education strikes uh, during which I was there. Um, not a nice thing to learn about, but it is another thing to learn about, about what, what's going on with, with higher education systems throughout the world um, and locally there. Then uh, working in a different country, different institution and different research environment is practically what I really appreciated. And for example, just little things that I've noticed when I logged into Lancaster University intranet, you know, what are the university management discourses? Right? What are the topics that are hot? What are the administrative systems used? What are the topical uh, issues? For example, at the time you were celebrating your success in, in REF, that was really great to kind of be part of that and see how important it is for the, for the department and the institution in general. Some topics that are uh, quite interesting in the UK, decolonizing curriculum is something that is not talked about in Finland at all, as, as you perhaps imagine. So that was something I kind of brought back here and said, hey, have you heard about these ideas? Do you know what they're trying to promote? What is here behind it? So that was very interesting to, to, for me to learn. And we indeed had a pretty long discussion back in my home in a seminar uh, based on my experiences. Um, Working in an English speaking country, I have to admit that was the first time I lived for a longer period of time in an English speaking country. It was really refreshing to go out and read anything in a, in a store or wherever and everything is in English. That was really refreshing and nice and kind of, um, yeah, it, it was really nice. <laughs> well, let's just say it like that. Um, Meeting researchers with different backgrounds and research approaches, as I mentioned, this is something I hoped to do. Obviously, you meet different people and, okay, what is your research about? And that was really interesting, using different theoretical, methodological and on onto epistemological approaches or using the same ones in a different way. This was really fascinating to learn about. Encountering different, and this is a little bit what just Don mentioned, encountering different conceptualizations of higher education processes, research and education. 
specifically the concept of internationalization I found to be quite different. So in, in the UK, I somehow learned that internationalization means different. It's almost by default international students, maybe. And then a little bit more than that, right? Um, in Finland, it's not necessarily so straightforward and it's a much more complex situation. And as you have already noticed, I'm trying to learn what it is actually all about. But it was a it was a kind of interesting to learn that these things mean different things in different contexts. Uh, I've also was uh, at the moment at the time when I was in Lancaster, I was attending a course back home in in my university related to curriculum development, and there were there was some talks of powerful knowledge, which is a topic that was I not very familiar with, and I've learned a lot through being in the UK, in 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 a system that in a way develop this these these theories much more you learn about the concept in a, in a different way uh, meaning of university studies as well so what are the topics that the students in a way try to promote that was also interesting to learn about in in lancaster which are a little bit different than maybe in finland and all of this helped me so i was there and then i came back and i'm thinking okay can i can't really compare these two spaces and i, I shouldn't it's not really easy to compare them they are very different contexts but what can i learn about my own space in in regards to these experiences i had and then how to i how to somehow yeah benefit from from this experience and i, I would really say i did especially because as i mentioned studying internationalization and being engaged in this kind of direct way in these international encounters and learning is really really rewarding that it's really hard to even even um, explain in words but these are just some again thank you for for your attention and i really hope that we can have some discussion based on this and i do look forward to your questions thank you thank you so much oh sorry don <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say thank thanks so much for those reflections, Vesna. I think you know there, it's it's really really interesting to know you know what comes out of 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 visiting research and experiences. And thanks so much for putting those together. And I'm you know I'm sure you had lots of questions when you got when you got back, but but it but it's really good to see those. So thanks ever so much for that. That's that's really really enlightening. Uh, you know, very, 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 very helpful, and um, and and indicates to us also, you know, um, and and gives us an idea of 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 what happens when when we're visiting researchers and how how we're able to see those things as well. But I don't want to hold the proceedings up, so I'm now going to hand back to Yanya so that she can move on to the onto the really important questions part. So thank you for that. Thank you very much, uh, Visna, indeed, for, for this uh, honest sharing of, of your experience and views. And thank you, Don, uh, for your input uh, about our internationalization activities, too. So now, um, please feel free to share your um, videos, video images with us. So if you want to show your face, please feel free to do so, so that we know there are some people there as well. Uh, if you would rather not, that's fine too. Thank you for those <laughs> who have. Uh, if you want to ask your question, please raise your hand. I will give you the floor. If you would rather just enter your questions or thoughts or comments in the chat area, um, you're welcome to do so too. You can ask or comment anything either from Business Fascinating Research Project or in her experience um, as a visiting researcher, you can also share your own experience um, or comment. So the floor is now open for discussion. Perhaps I will start with the first question, Visna, while we wait for, for others to come in. You mentioned briefly about um, when you returned to your institution, how you also shared your experience with your local environment. Could you say a bit more about that, how this visiting researcher experience sort of translated into your home university? Yes, thank you. Um, so most of these experiences in the UK happened in very implicit, non-planned way just go for lunch with someone and you talk about things and you kind of you know you learn even without really noticing so uh, this was really really you know what I really wanted maybe didn't really mention while I was explaining um, but then when I came back of course everyone is oh you're back so how was it 
it was so confusing to say, well, how was it? Um, mind blowing. I don't know how to say it, right? So um, being in a dif different space is really nice. Um, I've been quite critical towards certain developments we have currently in our own university. Uh, institutionally, we went through a big merger and there are big, big restructuring going on in our institution. And there are basically there are ongoing strategic development, what, what it is that we're trying to do. And we are a Finnish university, second largest currently in, in, in Finland. But the fact is, that's one of the issues I, when I raised the English language use, we are not very internationalized. And in our strategy, recent strategy of the university, if, if really the university sees internationalization as an important strategic goal whatever that means, right? And that's another issue. What does it mean to internationalize? So that was, um, that was an interesting um, observation in a way. So how do universities internationalize in different ways and different spaces? And, and in the UK, I've noticed it's just, it's not really even, I don't know if even Lancaster has internationalization strategy because it's a given thing. Obviously we are international and the language we use, it's accessible to anyone. So whatever you do locally, in Lancaster is accessible to anywhere, anyone in the world or locally, right? So that kind of issue of language was, for example, interesting. And um, uh, it's, it's something that, you know, is still being very much debated in, in our university. Um, but in any case, so these were some of the first thoughts that came to my mind when I met a couple of people on the corridor. So how was it? 